Hey, what's happening, everybody? The Job Guys back with you again. That is Nick. As always, this is Ryan. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Hey, Happy New Year. And that right there, Nick, that's what we're talking about today. We are bringing you our second annual Job Guys New Year's Wrestling Resolutions. These are things that like we think are going to make the product better, going to make fans happier, get ratings up, get attendance in the building up, just overall going to make wrestling a better product, whatever product you are watching, be it WWE, AEW, Impact, the Indies, whatever. When we did this last year for the first time, Nick, we did a pretty decent job. We hit some. Some uh, we did not hit at all. Our top resolution was for Roman to dominate 2021, uh, run the table, and he did did. exactly that, exactly what we wanted. We did want WWE to build new stars. They did some. Bianca Belair was huge. She had a great year, but beyond that, not too much. Also wanted uh, one of the things of the many we had, AEW to calm down those tag matches a little bit. Maybe abide by the rules. That did not happen. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that didn't, didn't. <laughs> that didn't happen whatsoever. Uh, they are all less still, zombies. Less zombies. Well, we didn't do that. Maybe we should have because we got zombies I, last year, and we also I got think Ghostbusters. We did. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're all less, still, maybe less zombie characters. I guess. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know they are there. They're just not on TV quite as much. We did talk about that as well. We don't know what Alex is doing. I think Abaddon is still around though. Um, so not perfect. Maybe batting around five hundred this year. We're gonna do it again. So let's roll. Forget last year. This is twenty twenty two, baby. And Nick, kind of like last year though. We are starting with the tribal chief. Second straight year, he sits atop our resolution list, does he not? The head of the table. Wrestler of the year. I mean, you got – and he's beat everybody. He's done it. And we got an exciting pay-per-view coming up with day one. I think a lot of us wrestling fans are excited for day one. Hopefully not let down because the way this is built, something's big is going to happen, and we're hoping that is the first step towards seeing what's behind me, right? Um, We want The Rock, we want Roman in the squared circle, one-on-one, no extras, no triple threat, no nothing like that, don't even need a cage. The match sells itself, and Roman goes over versus The Rock at WrestleMania. The Tribal Chief. Absolutely. And and Nick, we'll go on to expand on that, because not only do we want to see it because it makes sense, Nick, there's no other match Ryan. and we said it a year ago and he has run through everybody it lesnar they're talking lesnar again for a third time i don't want to see it again this Ryan. is the only match left i went to wrestling database here's what we're doing he's beat biggie he's beat brock lesnar shinsuke finn balor montez ford bobby lashley although it may be in two triple threat matches he still has wins over him john cena edge Ray Mysterio, Cesaro, Daniel Bryan, or Brian Danielson, whatever you want to know, he stacked and racked him. Yep. Kevin Owens, Drew McIntyre, Jey Uso, Braun Strowman, The Fiend in a, in a triple threat match. There isn't, there's nothing left for him to do. It's got to be The Rock. Yep. And it's got to be this year. I don't know how. We were skeptical that you could drag this out. And God bless guys like Edge, Cena for coming back. Brock Lesnar for coming back and making this a new feud. But we, I don't, you cannot do another 14 months of this, 15 months of him just fighting not The Rock. Yeah. Yo, I know, man. And we said it last year. If they're going to drag this out to WrestleMania 39 in LA, which is what the logo you have behind you, the LA Hollywood logo, what does this guy do? You know, some people were saying Jeff Hardy. Well, he's gone. You've got Drew. But that. He beat him. Yeah, he's he just already beaten him. him. Did not have a feud with him, but he beat him. No. He already he beat, beat him. him. And the only other guy is Seth Rollins. And he's a heel right now. I mean, he could change, but is he. Is that something that we really 
are looking at. I mean, I just don't know that you can go another I, year. I see Nick. it as a pay-per-view match. Oh, yeah. I don't see Seth Rollins as a WrestleMania match, if that makes sense to people. Against Roman, um, yeah. Right, yes. I, I just I, I don't think it's that he's that big to sell this card. No, I agree with you a thousand percent. The only way I would do it, you know, SummerSlam or something like that. Sure. Mania, I'm, man. It's got to so be this. Sure. Let's hope. New Year's resolution number one. This has got to be it. Then it's got to happen this year. I don't want to do 14, 15 months of him fighting every, AJ, Eric from the Viking Raiders, or whoever <laughs> else, he, you know, down the line. I just, right. I, we, you don't have guys. No. Well, Nick, we kind of said it, but why do we need The Rock at Mania? Why did you need Cena at SummerSlam? Why did you need Lesnar? Well, because we have no one legitimate for this guy to fight. And this is one of our resolutions from last year, and it carries over to this year. They need to build stars, and not just like stars. They need to build superstars, main-level talent. They don't have any. And both WWE and AEW, you know, the AEW did a decent job getting some guys on TV. WWE yeah. did a little bit too. Big E's the champion now. Damian Priest has been undefeated so far in singles action. But come on, man. Those two guys against Roman Reigns, it, 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 they, they are not anywhere near that level. And it's going to be a while. What they're doing right now, you know, isn't going to work. They are not going to get to that level. As for AEW, they've done a nice job. You know, Miro, after he was the video game guy, I think they did a great job rebuilding him. It looked like he was about to get right there, but now he's lost his last couple of matches, and he hasn't been on TV since. But I do like what they've done with him. I think he can be a legit dude. But think about this, man. On AEW TV, before they brought in Punk, and Brian, and Cole, and all these other guys they have brought in. The May pay-per-view, double or nothing. What was the main event of that pay-per-view? Pac and Orange Cassidy versus uh, Triple Threat with Kenny Omega, I believe. Yeah, dude. Really? That, that's your... Really? You sure, Brian? I mean... They were not Pac doing is not a legitimate contender. And I, I don't is I'm sorry if you all love Orange Cassidy. That's fine. I'm not saying he's terrible. I'm not saying he's well, man, I I don't know what I'm saying. I'm he's saying not he's a not world title world, contender. He's not a world title guy. There's he, not. I'm sorry. He should not be closing your pay-per-view. So that's what they were doing before this influx of main event WWE talent. So and I will say that's a terrible main event. That's a terrible main event. And it shouldn't have been the main event. So, but even worse than that, now that they have replenished the guys a little bit, the ladies. Hello, ladies. Dude, everybody who's listening to this show, I was on the Britt Baker bandwagon like immediately when she turned heel. The first like month was tough. Then she started finding her rhythm. I was driving the dang bus, dude. I, I think she has been absolutely amazing in 2021. Until she won the title. Because now she won the title and she's gone stale because she just keeps cutting the same promo over and over and over, over and over, over. She's got no one to fight, man. I mean, it's just like Roman. There is no one legit on this roster for her to fight. Listen to this, Nick. Since she won the belt, this is what... She won it on uh, May 30th at that pay-per-view, beat Hikaru Shida. And, of course, they never have rematches, so she hasn't fought Shida again. Then she's in a tag match, beats Nyla Rose and Vicky. World title match, beats Nyla Rose. That was in July 21st, so she didn't even defend the belt for two months. Title match, she beats Red Velvet. How does Red Velvet get a title match? How is How? She then fights uh, in September at the pay-per-view. She fights Statlander. Probably didn't deserve a title match either. Loses a tag match, then fights Ruby Soho, her very first dang night in the company, basically. 
She wins that, or it was her first night. She won the battle hey, royal. Scott, and then, Scott Steiner's her in. Yeah. And she, yeah. she goes right in, loses for the title. What do you do with her now? Her first match, she's out. Then she fights Anna Jay. How is Anna Jay fighting this girl? Um, tag match, tag match, tag match, which she's losing all, by the way. Trick or treat match beats Abaddon. Abaddon hasn't been on TV all year. How is she getting a title? <laughs> Tay J and Thunder Rosa beat him. Then a title match. She beats Ty Conti. Then her last match, she lost to Rio. This has been an absolute terrible, terrible. And it's because there's no one else for her to fight. So they got to throw Anna J in there. They got to throw all these other people I just named off because they don't have anybody else, man. We need. And, and how did she get over, by the way? How'd she her get mic over? Skill. I think her mic skills. I think her mic skills were what got her and sold her. Right. I, contrary it, to what apparently the AEW fans say, they love the in-ring work, and I'm not dogging her in-ring yeah. work. I don't think it's the worst in the business, but it's certainly better. Her mic is better than her in-ring. Who are their most over people in AEW? Who are the most over people in AEW? Eddie Kingston, CM Punk, um... You know, these even uh, Brent, Brian Daniel, um, Brian Danielson, yes. these guys can all talk. MJF, MJF, they, Moxley, they can all talk. who's not a good wrestler. MJF's a pretty okay, decent wrestler. Like, I don't know if you want to argue Chris Jericho, you may not like him, but he's oh, I mean, even Dan Lambert talk. started getting the internet rolling. He was getting more buzz on the internet than say guys like FTR this year. They the need to find talk. these people with the charisma, they need yep. to. Find them, strap the stinking rocket to them, both companies, uh, because they are both. Your champions are moving down yes. because they've got no one to bring no one. them up. Piper that said is. it back in the day when he came out at Halloween Havoc against Hogan. Did people come? Did they pay their money to cheer for you or to see you beat me up? Right. It takes two to tango, man, and neither of these guys have a partner. And that's why we put this at number two, because even if we get our number one wish with this Roman, which I'm not, I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, the glass always half empty, but after he beats, which I hope to God he does beat Roman, if he does fight him, what do you do with him? The next Somebody's got to eventually take this belt from him. Right. Like, what yeah, do they do the I next mean, night? You know, he, you, you got to build stars. We need stars. And what I'm saying is you got to start looking in gyms and arenas um, and look, because I'm not seeing it on either of their cards right now. And I don't mean to say that there's probably guys who can be better, but when I see Britt Baker, she can go on the morning show. She could go on Conan or whatever. Same with Roman. You're going to put Nyla Rose. You're going to put Botchlander. You're going to put all these other people, um, Velvet. What are you going to put them on? The late night show, yeah, they're not re they're not there. You need someone else to that level. I mean, back in the days when these guys were fighting, Piper, you know, could go on these shows. Bobby could take Andre on these shows. You know, Savage could go on these shows. Um, you just had got DDP could go on these shows. You know, you don't have it. You got to get it. Where are you at for number two, Nick? Your number two. My number two would be. Okay, so let's stay with this. The wheels fall off the wagon, Ryan. We cannot get The Rock. He's not coming for WrestleMania. Which we Everything's assume right now it doesn't sound good. Hopefully we're all getting worked. And I hope a lot of us are on the same page. We, I voted Brock, Brock, I mean, Rock, um, Roman mm. Brock feud of the year. My, me I thought too. it was great. I'm, I'm done with it after day one. Yep. I don't want it to extend. If it extends to the Rumble, I could even deal with that. I don't want to see it at WrestleMania. I really don't. Um, so how do you save WrestleMania if you can't get The Rock? This is an alternate resolution, if you will. Unification of three titles in the WWE. We get rid of the Universal and the WWE and combine them. We get rid of the men's tag team titles and combine them. We get rid of the SmackDown and Raw women's titles and combine them. And the reason I'm saying this is because it piggybacks as we're scaling down on all this. This one packed to yours. They don't have enough people. RK Bro and the Usos are so freaking far ahead of any other tag team. I get it. Street Profits have had a great freaking year too, but they're not even in the. I, 
They've already had the belts. We've already seen what they can do. You know, it, it, they're so far ahead. You got Becky, Sasha, Bianca, and maybe Charlotte, who are light years ahead of the rest of the roster. And all those girls have all fought each other over and over again. Right. You know, um, the, it's just even the world titles – it's just like we've named it. Romans fought everybody. I think though you could get another Big E Roman match or a Big E a Roman Bobby match if it was a title unification. It would make it a little different, a little more interesting. Even if he has already beat one of them or the tag team or if one of the female stars have already collided. That's why I have that as a saving revolution resolution of the year. If we can't get the Rock. Well, I, I would just like to see that regardless, whether the Rock's too, there or not. As I would, yeah. And, and of course, uh, I'm, we've talked about this before, but then the champion would float. You know, the champion yes. is on both All shows. champions, all three of those. Yep. The women's, the tag, and the men's. The IC and the um, U.S. would be exclusive. You, you they come are to the, the show, Raw and think... SmackDown title. Yes. those And the number I would say the number one contenders would float, too. Um, they would be better. And they already do this. They, yeah. I mean, because if you got, it's not like guys don't show up every freaking week on the other show. You know, wild card, yeah. or you know, whatever the heck we're calling it this week. He's here because he's backing up his boys, or whatever. They're already floating. You right. just let the number one contenders. You get to see them every week. But well, then they wouldn't even also- need to have to really. You know, they wouldn't even have to. You because then you'd overexpose the champ. Just keep the champ on one night a week. I don't know if they would want to do that, though. But that's my only – I mean, with the yeah. money on SmackDown, um, I'm sure they want a world belt. You know, being yeah. on Fox, that's the only thing. Yeah, I, would, I, would be, I wouldn't be mad with that because I'm watching both shows. Right, but, right. You know. Well, maybe if the world guys champ is on SmackDown for this feud, the ladies champ is on Raw, the tag belts are on Raw, what, you know, you – you do that or somehow. just nobody's exclu- only the champs are exclusive only the intercontinental and smackdown are exclusive to those shows you want to see them buy a ticket tune well, in and that's the other thing by doing that little- that will elevate the ic in the u.s title it they're a little more special they will then be the de facto smackdown and raw title instead of having the universal and whatever and you, that becomes you your have- champ now you have to watch that show or buy a ticket to that show to see that superstar. I agree. And I would say those, those ones are immune from the draft, too. Make it as special as possible to have those two titles. Completely agree, man. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, moving on to my next one. This is not going to make anybody happy out there. Maybe some people, but not too many. I'm pissed now. I would like to see less elite on All Elite Wrestling. What? What does that mean? That means I want to see less of that faction. I mean, Kenny Omega has already been gone here. Not forever here, but however long it's been. I don't think they've skipped a beat without it. I don't think anybody's sitting there clamoring for Kenny Omega to come back. Um, they've got legit guys here now, man. They've got Punk. They've got Brian. As we mentioned earlier, Miro is getting big. A lot of people like MJF. His in-ring is getting better. Keep going with him. Um, I, I don't like a single thing about the Young Bucks. I know I'm not alone, but I know um, big-time AEW fans absolutely love them. And it's not just the wrestling. Their promos are terrible. The overacting is just bad. Focus. And it happened on New Year's Smash here. There was a promo in the back with the Young Bucks um, and the uh, Undisputed Era, which is now together. And the overacting back there was just... That the spray it, tan? No, that was on being the elite when they did the spray tan party. And since you mentioned it, use that as an example, the spray tan party from the other day. Just ridiculous. Imagine if that was on Raw and what would happen if that was on Raw. Vince is ruining these guys. They're in stupid, stupid Vince sports entertainment comedy, sports entertainment. Vince is dumb comedy. It's so dumb. 
These guys do. I think this is even dumber, personally. I think their comedy is even worse than this. Um, he gets murdered for it. And how do I know he gets murdered for it? Because he does have dudes doing bad comedy. And he gets murdered for it. it, it this is worse. The 69 Me Don stuff. All the, the, the jokes like that that they make. You mentioned Spray Tan. Ghostbusters, the Space Jam stuff. You know, we got zombies on the other channel, which was bad. It was horrible. This was too. And it had your world champion involved with Hangman, which is supposed to be the greatest, biggest feud that they have. And they're in there dressed like Ghostbusters, man. Um, you know, apparently it's only bad, though, if Priest and Miz do it. It was bad both ways, guys. It was bad both ways. Um, to me, again, this is me. They're the worst thing on All Elite Wrestling. That entire group. I, they are instant. If I'm watching on DVR, they are fast forward. If I am watching and there's a game on, like tonight, New Year's Smash, Pistons were playing with an entire G League team today. They had six players they just signed in the last two days because of COVID playing the Knicks. I watch that instead, man. I, I just, they, they make me not want to watch. Um, and I know that's if not going to happen now because we have the undisputed era here now. So now that's going to get interesting. Are they together? Are they not? What's going to happen when Kenny comes back? Whatever. And that's another, like, how many, how many factions is Adam Cole in right now? Right. The elite, the super click, whatever they're going to call the undisputed era. It like, how about the, again, that whole company is like 1997 WWE. Everyone is in a clique or a faction. Too many factions. But anyway, the elite, like they're not. Yeah. I get why people like them. It's just sure. too over the top. And it for me, it makes me watch something else immediately. And you're panning to a small base to me. I mean, how many when we've looked at the numbers from Raw to NXT or SmackDown to NXT, the people that are following Adam Cole and his group, I'm not, okay, maybe you like, I'm not saying good or bad, yeah. it's a small number of people. So this idea, and it's a smaller number of people too that are following the, the Young Bucks and Omega and what they did in Japan. So I get that you're maybe building toward this three-way rivalry with Omega and the Bucks versus Cole and his guys. Maybe that's how you're going. I don't know. But how many people really know the backstory? Right. How many people are really with, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I, I catch NXT if I can. I'm right. not a diehard. Mm -hmm. I, like I am a raw SmackDown AEW. I watch every week, you know, even dynamite. I don't watch NXT every week. I catch it when I can. It's like impact for me. Um, I, I don't watch the stuff in Japan. So yeah, these guys are and they're I, I, punk better. Brian better. Way better. Uh, Mir Miro, but I mean, Kingston better. You know, I, I mean, these guys are drawing the, I mean, they're doing a lot better. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, they are. And uh, I would rather see them it, as bad as he has been. And I know he's with them. It, that group anyway, came obviously all together. Uh, Cody's more interesting right now, just because I'm like, all right, what, what are they going to do with it? Where are they going? Right. What are they doing with it? So it's more interesting, even though it's not great. Uh, that Nick, that's it for that one, man. Go ahead with your, with your next one. Uh, this is mine. And I'm sorry. I'm sure I'm going to upset some people with this, right? You guys voted this match of the year. A this lot of is places. the, uh, this is the upsetting people part of the show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm sorry, but I'm going to share with some people. I had to rewatch this match because I fell asleep. I, it was 60 freaking minutes, people. Like, I mean, my God, I have to work the next morning. And, and it's, and the thing is, I had just seen it. I had just seen it the previous, I mean, it took the so finish. much away. You saw the finish. Well, the finish, well, I meant it took away from the Brian Omega match. Because, you know, everybody's like, oh, that match was so good, time draw. And then, like, two weeks later, we go to another freaking time draw. I, I raw opens up their first match. And I'm not just picking on AEW here. I, raw. Sometimes that first match goes three freaking commercials, man. It's ridiculous. I, I, that it just, the final match on SmackDown often runs 
the last 25 minutes of a two hour show. You know, it is, is, it's just too much for me, Ryan. I, and again, I'm not saying you can't have these. I'm not saying they don't have a place for these, but when every other match or even a third of your matches are 25 to 40 to 60 minutes, right. they're not special. Yeah. They're just common. They're just boring. Um, and I'd like to see, I'm not saying all of them, but some matches can be under 10 minutes. Not every match has to be the women's king of the ring. You know, that's <laughs> not what I'm saying. So I, I, everybody can back that down, you know, but some matches could go eight minutes. Some matches, how about 12, 14, you know, do we need to see this match behind me every freaking week? That would right. be my resolution. Let's, let's get some diversity in the matches and it kills your guys. Daniel Bryan's going 25 with John Silver? Right. Get out of here. That's the stuff that kills me, Nick, when these established guys are going the distance. And they're like, oh, well, you're putting over the younger guy without, you know, they're like, no, I don't think people think like that. I think people are going, this nobody is taking Kenny Omega 22 minutes. Right. I think that's the way, at least the people I talk to. I know there are some people out there that like some, but. The majority of people are going, how is Horowitz lasting 20 with Savage? Right. That's what they're thinking. It's a very bad signal that you're putting out to the American people. Yeah, I'm with you, man. It's like anything. Shorter matches would be my another Every, resolution of mine. Anytime you do anything too much, it ruins it. Anytime and I'm not asking to anything. go back to the Russo era. I'm not. Oh, gosh, Again, no. I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind. I just want a very uh, a variety, you know, not all of them, you know. Let's do a couple, you know, hit me one, maybe one week on AEW or Raw, no match goes over 15 minutes, but they all go over eight or something like that, you know. That's fine. Right, right. Well, you just mentioned it, dude. Good job by you. Speaking of Vince Russo, what was Vince? Well, there was plenty of things, but. Maybe especially when he was in WCW, more than anything. What was he criticized for more than anything back in the day and those WCW days? They didn't build I don't know, they, they didn't get guys over, didn't build stars. What are you looking for? Right? Well, there was a bunch. How about how about booking for the internet? Completely oh, oh, booking yeah. for the internet and when changing you, shows. Dude, when you for look, the internet. The entire shows they were booking for the internet. They were booking for the smart marks. They were to, with the whole when he was the powers that be, and then all this other stuff. And they were using all these insider terms on the air and all this, just all this meta stuff that they were trying to do before meta was even a word people used for stuff like that. Too inside with his booking. How is that any different than what AEW is doing today? Now, is it Russo extreme? No. No, it isn't. But in some ways, it is in some ways. And I think we've covered some of them here in the past 10 minutes with some of the stuff you, you have been saying and myself as well. We got guys, you know, the whole EVP thing, and they have toned that down a little bit, but they do bring it around with Cody sometimes talking about how they're EVPs and how they're running this company. But then, like, they blur the lines if this is real or not with some stuff. You got Dan Lambert out here week after week shooting on the entire company, playing up and then trying to flip the criticisms of some of the internet, trying to flip it around and use that um, to get have the it. fans, yeah, to get ahead of it. And to have some of the, you know, the fans can't say that stuff anymore because they've acknowledged it. MJF is constantly shooting and he's constantly out there. I'm the best on the stick. I'm, I'm so good on the stick. Like, aren't you supposed to be winning matches? Why are you, what are you talking about? Best? Stuff like that. They keep bringing in all these outside guys and expect us to know who they are. Now, maybe the hardcore of the hardcores, the guys who are super familiar with the indies and whatnot, they may know who some of these guys are. Who is it? The Blade. Blade and the Butcher. But you just mentioned it. 
How about the Undisputed Era? They bring them in. You don't know who they are. I watch a ton of wrestling. I know who they are. I would not have been able. I would not have been able to pick Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly out of a lineup before a week ago. I would not have been able to do it. And I I know the names, but these are big time dudes. These were the number one guy, and they just bring them in. Bobby Fish, especially, they just bro. Oh, Bobby Fish is here. I'm like, why am I supposed to care? They just throw this stuff at you and expect you to know what's going on, Ryan. They reintroduced Dusty freaking Rhodes to the WWE WWF <laughs> universe, right. right? Dusty freaking Rhodes, a guy that many people have in the top freaking 10 right. of their wrestling. They brought him in and did vignettes mm. for I don't know how long before yep. they put Dusty freaking Rhodes in the ring. Yep. And you think I know who this Sakanawa or whoever the hell is coming from Japan is. I have no clue. Drew Mac and Fart. I, I don't know. I don't. And I, I, Bobby Fish, again, I see his name. That's all I know. I, right. I, I've seen it when I click, you know, if I got some time and I'm reading wrestling rumors, like you say. This is, and, and these guys, these guys from Japan might be good. Yeah. These guys from NXT might be good. You just got to introduce them to me and not just throw them out like it's Brian Adams, everyone. Yeah, well, it goes back to like what we said about building the stars. Like Minoru Suzuki, when he came over, I know a lot of the Jets. They were, they were just absolutely, oh, my gosh, Minoru Suzuki's here. And he's a guy I think I have seen work before. I couldn't have picked him not out me. of a lineup, though. And I don't care because I don't know who he is. We said the same stuff about WCW back in the Nitro days yes. when Yuji Nagata would come out. And some of these were like, uh, who is this guy? Oni yeah. Ono comes out. He takes the picture and what I'm like, uh, okay, I don't know who this is. Same well, thing this, here, it, man. It was hard when Ultimo Dragon was amazing. That guy he is had, one of the best in-ring performers. He's got all these belts. They bring, I don't know who this freaking guy is. Right. Like, I, I, I don't full of know. Belts. Yep, and they I didn't don't know do you. No vignettes, no talk, no nothing, no backstage and I'm not, interview. We're not digging on that guy. That guy has no. some of the best matches. You can go back and see some of his matches with Mysterio and Malenko, and they are freaking awesome. Well, Wade Keller has said it since the very beginning. You got your first million. You got your first million. What are you going to do to get your next million? Yeah. And just booking matches that could be five star, four star, whatever matches over and over again, and then never a rematch. Never, you know. They just, look at this Kingston Punk feud that lasted like two weeks. They cut two really good promos. One was exceptional. They fought, then it was done. On to the next. Um, you know, might as well use that one right now. And kind of go- stop playing to that. Yeah. You're going right into my next one. This is my final one, Ryan. It's all, it's, 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 and I, they need to build stories and feuds in AEW, especially. If you're telling me this was the best feud, I, I don't, what's their best moment in time? What's the best interview? They, the best promo between the well, two of them. What's that memorable them? moment? What's that memorable moment? I can tell you right now why Beefcake fought Outlaw Ron Bass <laughs> or why, I, I, I know though. It's it's a terrible feud, but Ryan, you remember the scissors? I mean the the, the I mean the the spur cutting him. They had to put an X you, over the screen. I can tell you why Rude hated the snake, why Hogan hated Sting, and it wasn't just because of a title. Uh, people watch boxing, people watch MMA for title matches, and I'm not saying you can never do anything over the title. I I know people take things to extremes that we sometimes say. Yeah, I would love to see that here and there. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes the title is enough, you know, but not for everything, and not every match on the card has a title. Right. Okay, I don't don't just want to watch two dudes fight for the fourth ranking on the AEW (laughs) rank list. That's well, not and, if they, and if they have these rankings, why do they keep having tournaments for titles and number one contenders and battle royals? And you got rankings. Britain versus the United States is not a feud, okay? I, I, I well, mean, it was, not. and it ended racism. Well, I guess. It ended yes, racism that's true. also. But these I guys, watched. and again, I'm not dogging me. These guys could be the future of your company. These guys put on a great match. Um, 
you know, a, all that. I just would like, a, I, I don't, it's not memorable. It's you're, if you're the more, the match is more memorable than the moments you look back at these, some of these like Hogan, Andre, yeah, the slam, but we remember Piper's pit. We remember other things in there, you know, sting Hogan. Thank God all we don't remember is just the match. <laughs> I mean, that, you know, it's, it was so bad that we remember. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but they had other moments, you know, DDP and Savage. They had other moments that we remember. Like, these feuds were great, you know. Um, I, I, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, you know, these things. Austin. That, what's, the, what's the Austin's big match that you remember? Maybe Shawn Michaels. Um, I remember that, that one. I remember The Rock. Um, Which one? It's all the moments. With the rock. right, I get right. I guess Band them in the three sixteen I, filling the car with cement. You know, just go down the list. Austin fighting the corporation, spraying them with the hose. Or, I didn't rock through the Austin over the bridge, or one of they one of them went over the bridge. Over the bridge, yeah. Right, yeah. That oh, yeah, these are good moments, man. That's what you remember. I I hope they do this stuff. I hope. Because again, I am pulling for AEW in this they've next year the to horses. have some good feuds. They do have I, horses. Yes, they've got dudes now. No, they got to just get stories, feuds, character development. That's what I want to see: real feuds that we remember mo moments in time, not in the ring, not some hurricane rana off of that balcony in the background behind my freaking you know that you see up there on the side. That's that. It's great, but. Something between them, you know, like a Kingston Punk moment. That was a moment. I, I think it might have been one of my favorite in AEW this year. I think that promo was better than the MJF Punk one, that the twenty-minute one. I think I it, was it was way awesome. better. It was Dropped way more job. effective. They fought once, and then that uh, was it. It was over. And there was almost a feud there. But he was telling him, "We don't want." It wasn't over a belt. I don't want you here. A lot of dudes don't want you here. You come back, you're running your mouth, you left the people, whatever, you know what? It, there was something there and it made it special. I hope they do more of that. I talked last year about some fans and I want to do it again, only this time. The tribalism is so bad. It is so bad right now. You know, it, it's like you're either with us or you're against us, brother. You know, if you like WWE, you cannot like AEW. And if you, the other way around, if you like AEW, you must hate Roman Reigns and he's the Antichrist and all this stuff. Like, and people are just vicious to people online, man. I mean, they are vicious, both sides. Break his back, make him humble. Yeah, and I think that has been, again, because AEW is playing to the internet a little bit, that I think that has started it and continued it. And so they're rallying behind their team. And now we get, I just wish it wasn't that bad. Because you got people over here, like, shutting down their accounts and stuff, you know? like, right. And we got wrestlers shutting down their accounts. Like today, and this is their fault, but because they've released a ton of people. But Tony Storm leaves WWE today. And every single comment on earth for the first hour was, these screw them. I hate them. I'm never watching again. This is why I like this. And this is why. Well, then you find, you find out she quit. And we still don't know why or what happened or whatever. She wasn't released. There wasn't going to be mass releases. And then everybody starts fighting. And that starts the whole war up until something else happens next week. And then we got another war. And we're going, how about you just like what you like watch what you watch my gosh man it's not that serious dude it's wrestling like i don't get do you get mad at people like you love game of thrones i've never seen it i have no interest in it because i don't like dragons and all this stuff it sucked like i might say it stunk something about a dragon but like we don't fight about it. <laughs> like, oh, they, went, they went after the announcer, the producers for their last season. They didn't, the fans didn't like it. All the fans that didn't write the show, that didn't have the creativity to come up with it themselves, had yeah. problems with how the guys that did finished right. it. Right. So, you know, relax. I'm with you. Back it down. Maybe even halt up and wait a little bit when you hear stuff come out like this guy and our gals released. You know, right. let's wait and see. You remember, they did that with Bray Wyatt. Nobody knew what was going on. Nobody yeah. knew exactly what was happening. And, and again, 
to be honest with you, most of us don't know. You know what? You you get on there and you hear, you do not know what's happening backstage between Vince, between these superstars, between Khan, between his superstars, or between these superstars individually between themselves or their personal lives, what they are going through. Right. And, you know, yeah, let's, let's just back it down. If someone does get released, yeah, you can be a little upset, but how about you wish them well because there's multiple companies now, right? You can go somewhere else. Tony <laughs> right. Storm, if she, her she's wrestling career is not... She's got AEW. She's got Impact. She's got Japan. She's got a lot of options out there, you yep. know, and just let's wait and see where she lands. Who knows, Ryan? Remember, sometimes getting released is the best thing that can happen to some. And I'm not trying to downplay that. It's a horrible thing to lose your job. But sometimes moving companies. Austin? How did it work for him? Yeah, yeah. pretty good. I think he got fired, didn't he? Yeah, that he did. As did uh, Sean Waltman. How'd that work out for him? Yeah, there's a lot of guys that it's done okay with. And those are extreme um, examples. Right. Yeah, yeah, man. It's just like. I don't know why every every dude people are vicious, man. <laughs> like like vicious. So I, I don't think it needs these to are, be these these are these people are people just like me and you. Well again, you and know, I go they back go... to the T V thing. And back in our day, like Seinfeld and Friends. Like, did if somebody said, Oh, I watch I like Friends better than Seinfeld, like you didn't start ripping on them on AOL Instant Ooh. Messenger because they you know, like what great. Watch your Seinfeld then. Yeah, I, have fun I, I, watching that. I'll I, be I'm over glad. here. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's but it's crazy, man. People get so upset. So anyway, that's my last thing. Anything else okay. quickly, Nick? A little quick resolution without maybe any explanation. You got one. Straight down the line, um, Riddle has to turn on RKO when they break up. Done. Yep. Over. Don't need to say anything else. He's got to be the one. We've seen Orton turn a million times. Yep. My last one is you want to build new stars, guys you have on the roster. I would start with Montez Ford. You said Street Profits have already done their thing, which they have. They're good together. I like them, but they've been there, done that. Push this guy. Get him off on his own. This guy's got exactly what we said, the charisma for days, and he can work, and he can fly. He looks good, man. I like him. I like that one too. I, I I hope we're not, and we're not trying to be hostile. These are things we hope happen to make it better. Like again, I want AEW to do better. I want WWE to do better. I I'm cheering for Hangman. Like I I'm not yeah I'm not saying I'm the biggest fan. Hope he has a great run. Hope he has yeah. some great feuds. I'm cheering for Roman. I it's better when everybody wins, guys. If you weren't there for the Monday Night Wars, it was awesome. Yep. You weren't there for the late '80s. You could watch WCW or NWA or WWE or F at the time. They were all good shows. Yep. Yep. Nick and I will be here with you after the first ever day one pay-per-view. Excited. Hopefully that leads us back to our number one resolution of the year. And hopefully we get an appearance um, from one member of the Samoan dynasty. Let's hope. Nick. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks as Thank always. Thank you for having me. me. Happy New Year's, everybody. Again. Until 2022. Yeah, buddy. Thank you. Hit like, hit subscribe. You got a New Year's resolution of your own? Drop it in the comments, please. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Happy 2022, everybody. Until then, see ya. Pleasure's all yours, Bucky boys. Bucky boys.